Good morning. Hi, um, and welcome to all my new subscribers. Um, I'm just making a video today um, which is not related to any British films, it's just part of my daily life. Um, I'll show you something about what I do for my day job. Um, and how I normally start my day is by having tea. Let me show you. Yeah, okay. So, ham and cheese croissant. What about grey tea? Dash of milk. Um, so I'm going to have my breakfast and then I'm going to um, head off to work and I will um, yeah I'm this video could be a, uh, quite long those of you who have been following my channel for some time will know something about what I do um, and the, the building specifically that I've been working on um, hang on a moment sorry you didn't want to look at my breakfast all the time did you yeah so some of you will who've been following my channel for a while you look through the playlist you'll see videos of some of the work that I do I work in construction <coughs> um, mostly on, in restoration I've been working on a project for on this one particular building it's Victorian mansion block um, so I'm, I'm going to show you more about that but first I'm going to have my breakfast and um, as I said this could be a long video so Go and get yourself a cup of tea and some biscuits if you want to watch and uh, I'll show you about what I do. I'll see you shortly. Hi. Hi. Right. This row of late Victorian mansion blocks is a building I've um, been working on at various points I've had contracts here for well over 20 years um, there was some very large-scale um, restoration work carried out in the late 90s um, throughout the 90s and I was part of that but my association with this building goes back a long way um, construction what I was first trained at trained in what I am is a carpenter um, however um, after having done this for so many years um, I've got involved with all sorts of aspects of these kinds of buildings um, in construction plumbing plastering whatever bricklaying so I've spent a large part of last year changing a lot of the soil stacks at the rear of this building. That's the um, waste pipes on the rear of this building. You'll note there's no pipes or cables anywhere on this building at the front. Um, no telephone cables, no incoming uh, gas mains, water mains, no cable TV, no aerial cables, no alarm cables. There are none on the facade of this building. No TV aerials on the roof. So the facade of this building is much as it would have looked like in sort of 1900 when this building was first built. Um, <coughs> yeah, so my association with this building. Um, the list is too long to go on, but um, yeah, myself and my team have remodeled a number of the apartments in in these in this row of mansion blocks um, more recently I've been doing a lot of the external works um, I'm sort of semi-retired to be quite honest and uh, and um, so I tend to work much on my own now I get a team of people in if I need them so my project today which I thought I would show you what I'm doing or what I've been asked to do um, it's going to be up there. It's there's an issue with the brickwork, with dampness coming through the brickwork at roof level, 
um, into one of the apartments. So um, that's my objective today is to resolve that issue. And I thought I'd kind of take you through the process of what I'm going to do and how this gets approached. So let's make our way up there and I'll talk to you more about it. Hi, so I'm currently in the loft of one of these buildings. I've just come up there that, through that roof hatch. Let me just turn around. These are very large lofts. Now this loft space, try and ignore the messy insulation. I don't know who did that. Um, these lofts, but this loft space covers two of the roof uh, above two, two of the apartments. But what I wanted to show you in here, because it relates to what I'm about to do, is the internal side of this wall. So that, that wall that you're looking at there is the party wall between this particular block and the next and the next one. So this um, building as a whole has 13 blocks. Each block is divided by these party walls. So this is the internal face of these party walls. These particular bricks, because I'm going to be doing brickwork today, are known as London Stocks. And it looks quite rough, but then it's okay. And you'll see that the mortar joints, despite it being a bit dirty and grubby, it's actually quite white behind. And that's because that's been put together with a lime mortar, which they would have used then rather than a Portland cement, which we use today. Having said that, um, I should point out that um, Portland cement um, was invented many hundreds of years ago. I think it was 17 something, 1750 or whatever. Um, but it was originally invented and designed for stucco work. Um, and it really wasn't until Bo Joseph Bazalgette, uh, uh, a British civil engineer who created many of the sewers in London, which is still used today. Um, he used it in the brick and building um, Portland cement. He used Portland cement to do the brickwork for his um, brick built culverts and uh, sewer drainage work. Anyway, I won't, I, I could easily waffle on about the whole history of all of this stuff for a very long time and it will be getting very tedious. So that window, which is a Velux roof window, is where I've got to get out of to get onto, to get access to the roof. The reason I show you this party wall is because I'm going to show you this party wall from the outside. As you can see, this wall isn't very pretty, but then it doesn't need to be. It's simply a division between this block and the next. Um, why is it important to have a brick wall division? It isn't just the demarcation between or creating a physical boundary for legal purposes or any other purpose, but it has a very important purpose. And that purpose of having these party walls like this between this one building and the next, and same with terraced housing, is it creates a fire break. So if you have a row of buildings, a row of mansion blocks in this case, um, a party wall like this creates a fire break so that fire, if there's a fire in one block, it doesn't spread through to the next block. So that's a party wall. I'm going to be dealing with the party wall on the just above the roof here um, so I'm going to be going out that window which is where I'll show you next okay so that's the window I've just come out of and if you can imagine that party wall I've just been discussing inside the loft is there um, as you can see I have a large chimney stack um, which has 10 pots on it five for this side of the building, five on the other side and right up to the apex of the roof there. So um, if we look down the building just to remind you of what we're dealing with. Um, 
So from one end of the building, looking around, that's the park across the road here. There's the sun, so it's difficult to see with the sun there. Um, but the whole row of these mansion blocks goes all the way down there. They're 13 mansion blocks. So, architecturally, what do we have? The, so, the, so the facade is made up of these Dutch gables. That's these sweeping curves that we have here. It gives us the uh, look of a Dutch gable. We have mixed a mixed kind of order of um, architectural features here and going back to the classical orders so we have this sort of Grecian type finial here on the top and these ball finials here <coughs> and then if we look down so you know if you look up at the building from below it does actually make it look really rather good um, so there's looking down there's no scaffold on this particular job because I don't need it today. Um, I'm just here, excuse me, I'll just step over this wall. So, as I said, there's a party wall between this building and that building. It creates um, a fire break between the buildings so fire couldn't spread from one block to the other. Now, to talk about the issue that I have come up here to deal with, um, it's this... It's this parapet wall, it's, it's the top of this party wall. So, <clears throat> in 1993, when this building was, had the major, began the major works um, in terms of restoration, all of these roofs were reslated. And the, these walls were, um, the tops of these walls were rebuilt. So, <clears throat> as you can see, we have a red brick here. <clears throat> these particular bricks they're sort of more orange than these original bricks these are known as engineering bricks they're really really it's a really hard heavy clay brick impervious to water as opposed to these red um, known as soft red facing red, facing bricks these are the original bricks but they're very good at keeping water out um, so if we think about, if we look down, you'll see a balcony. That balcony relates to a flat that's below me now. Below me now is their living room, front room, and they have a lot of water ingress here. Now, I've come across this before as an issue further down in the building. Um, so let me just explain about the construction of this, the capping of this wall. I'll, I'll go around the other side so you can see it better in the sun. So, <coughs> excuse my shadows. Okay, so this is what we know as a brick on edge finish with an over sailing course. So if you imagine, we've got to think about how the, the building gets weathered. Rain comes down here. It, runs down here it should run off and this these over sailing course apart from a nice sort of uh, visual feature is there to help dress uh, get the water away from the wall and then we have these lead flashings now somebody i don't know who installed these lead flashings but you can see here where the two lead flashings join somebody's tried to repair this before badly with some kind of mastic joint silicone or whatever um hasn't quite worked so what i'm going to be doing here today um so the water ingress inside the flat below here is on this wall just here so my objective today is to remove all of these bricks for which i have a machine up there to do I'm going to remove these bricks up to about here. Now, under these bricks, there should be something called a DPC. A DPC, DPC stands for a damp proof course. That's like an isolating membrane that prevents any water from getting from the top of the bricks through 
and down into the brickwork below. Um, so I don't know if there is a DPC here or not. What I can say is obviously there's no over sailing course down here. Um, obviously they couldn't get it to get to match the height. So I'm going to take these bricks off, remove them. They're going to get broken in the process. I'll put new ones back when I'm finished and up to about here. And then I'm going to investigate what's going on on the wall and see, try and find out um, where the water is ingressing into the apartment below. Um, I suspect I know, but um, we'll take this asunder first. But whatever the case, I'm going to be ending up putting in new lead flashings. These are going to go. Um, I'll redesign them and, and uh, do a better job. Frankly, these are not very good. So I'll take these brickwork off and I'll get back to you once I've done that. Okay, so <clears throat> I've just cleaned up after having removed these bricks. Um, let me try and explain what we're looking at for those of you who might not know. I'm sure this is very boring for a lot of you, but it's kind of what I do and it's... Um, basically to stop water getting into buildings. So this is part of the party wall. There's an issue below me. This is somebody's living room. They have water ingress at this point here. As I've explained, we have a um, on this wall, if I just run that wider, we have a brick on edge finish with an over sailing course here, <coughs> under which we have a lead flashing, the slates there. This is a lead um, gutter. Under this sailing course, as I explained, there should be a DPC. This is it. I don't know, sorry, if, I can, if you can see that. This, this membrane here. That membrane, that's a DPC, which stands for Damp Proof Course. That's to prevent any further water getting through the mortar joints on this brickwork through into creating dampness within, within the building. Um, okay. So now that you understand that, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at the point where um, I've done as much as deconstruction as I'm likely to do. I might, I'm going to take some more brickwork off here at some point. Um, the issue of the flat below is the water is getting in here somewhere. This is the lead flashing. I'm going to remove it while, while I'm standing here. So that's that piece of lead flashing, which frankly isn't very well done. Let's remove these bits of brick. So, and the, but there is, it's, it's notable to see that there's no DPC, no damp proof course over this section of the brickwork. And this is an issue I've come across before. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, once I've straightened up the brickwork, I'm going to do some mortar work, I'll, I'll show you, prepare the surface. And then I'm going to create um, what I call a lead saddle. So we have lead flashings. Here's, here's an example of a lead flashing, this one here, which takes us down onto this lead gutter. Um, you can see these. Are, this is done in quite a short piece. That's kind of basically how it should be. There's one over there. Um, and there's some going up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make... Uh, so the lead come, will be coming down here, will be going across as a single piece and down the other side. So it... it so the lead won't only be a flashing, it will be the DPC, the damp, it will prevent the damp coming through there in itself. So we'll have the flashings and DPC all in one hermetically sealed unit. I will then cut into this brickwork and chase that into that brickwork. Anyway, so I'm now at the point where I've taken off as much as I'm likely to. I'll probably remove this and straighten all this brickwork up. Um, get the brickwork prepared. Um, and then start making the lead flashing stroke DPC saddle thing that, that's going to go there. Once I've done that, I'll have to reconstruct and rebuild this section of the wall so that it comes through there over what I've done. Anyway onwards and upwards and I'll be back shortly. Hi, <clears throat> as you can see I'm now inside the building. It started pouring down with rain. It's grey, horrible and raining outside. Um, so 
So I'm going to stop the works on the roof. I'll have to come back and do it tomorrow. So this is going to be a two-part video. Um, part two will obviously be when I can complete those works and I can show you what I've been doing. But for now, that's all. Um, and I look forward to be able to show you part two. Until then, bye for now.